Close your eyes and watch your breath. Stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. And then all the way in, all the way out again. Keep with it. Try to bring some consistency to what you're doing here. Because that's a th strength in the mind. It's part of persistence. You've got something good, you give rise to it, and then you maintain it. We need to strengthen the mind because it's attacked on all sides. Attacked from things outside, attacked from things inside. Greed, aversion, and delusion come up and they attack the mind. The problem is we don't recognize them as problems. We side with them. It's when we do recognize them as problems that we can do something about them and become free from them. This way we give rise to wealth inside. One of the messages of the world, especially through the media, is that we're lacking. We lack this, we lack that, but if we buy what they want to sell us, then we'll be happy. And so they're trying to make us feel poor all the time. So you have to remind yourself, you have some wealth inside that money can't buy. The Buddha identified seven types of inner wealth altogether. And they're all things that no one can take from you. It's not like the world, wealth of the world outside, where you get money and then they devalue the money, or they take it away from you. This is genuine wealth, and it really is good for the mind, because outer wealth can be bad for you. If you don't have the right discernment to use it well, you can end up destroying yourself. But if you're rich with inner wealth, then you're safe. So it's good to stop and take stock of your inner wealth. You have conviction that what you do will give results. In other words, you act on skillful intentions and get good results. You act on unskillful intentions, you get bad results. You have that power to choose. Based on that, you have a sense of shame that you don't want to do anything that people you respect would look down on. You realize that you're a better person than that. And a sense of compunction. You really care about the results of your actions. You want them to lead to happiness. You don't want to say, I don't care. I'll just do what I want. That kind of attitude is poverty. The wealthy attitude is, I've got this power inside me. I want to use it well. Based on that, you observe the precepts. You don't harm anybody. You don't harm yourself. You have knowledge of the Dharma, which reminds you what's right and what's wrong, what should be done what should not be done. You've got generosity, which includes not only generosity with material things, but also generosity with your time, generosity with your energy. You're happy to give where you see the need. And then finally, discernment. When you're going to make choices, you realize you have the power of choice. You want to make those choices wise. And you've learned to see through the tricks of your defilements so they don't lead you astray. All of these things are forms of wealth. And it's good to remind yourself every now and then that you do have this wealth inside. That a lot of people in the world out there are very poor in terms of these seven things. Even though they have a lot of material wealth, they they're poor in terms of their minds, and you have to feel sorry for them. But it is okay to take pride in your own inner wealth, because that encourages you to, to amass more inner wealth. Wanting more inner wealth, inner wealth, the Buddha didn't say is greed. It's a form of initiative. People see they have the opportunity in this world to make something of themselves, make something really good of themselves, and they go for it. That's a wealthy attitude. That's a healthy attitude that the Buddha wants to encourage. So when you're feeling poor in spirit, stop and take stock of the fact that you really do have these forms of wealth inside. And if any of them are lacking, well, you know what to do. Because you've got that knowledge of the Dharma that gives you advice, advice that you can trust. This is what the Buddha wanted to leave behind in the Grand Awakening, advice for people so they can know what it should be done, what shouldn't be done, what will be for their long-term welfare and happiness, what will be for their long-term harm, so that they can act on that knowledge and give rise to the well-being that everybody wants. Because that's what the wealth is for, basically. It's for well-being. It's just that this kind of wealth is the kind of wealth that leads to a genuine well-being deep down inside, well-being that lasts. So rejoice in the fact that you have these forms of wealth. Don't let the world tell you that you're poor.